Hi everyone and welcome to another Witch Doctor video. This video is the Virtual Agent Walkthrough in Service Now Part 2. I named it the second edition since um, my first video about this seems to be off in the audio sync. So after like 25 seconds, the sync went way off and not even I can actually look at that video. So I'll redo that for you guys. So. I did the first part talking about virtual agent, how you could start it up and do that. I'll put a link to that video in the description field. Some short nagging about me, call myself Witch Doctor since I'm a gaming one and was playing Diablo when I came up with that name and the Witch Doctor character just came there. Been working with service now for quite a long while now. Work with all the fun stuff, technical assignments, architecture, mentoring, and so on. And yada yada yada, I won't bore you with this one. You've probably seen it before. Today, we're going to look at the general settings of uh, the virtual agent. And we're also going to look how you can create your own topic and what kind of different stuff you can actually do in the virtual agent. So let's skip the boring PowerPoint and let's get going to my instance. Do it like that. And let's log in to my dev instance. And loading, loading, loading. So let's skip back to the global settings. So the first thing we're going to look about is how you can brand your virtual agent, make them look better. Let's get up my service portal so you can see what we are talking about. Whoops, too fast. Here we go soon. There we go. I have activated the little icon down here. If you would like to see how to do that, please check out my part one video. I'll click on the chat icon and now you can see you have some text, some different pictures and some startup text coming your way. And where do I change that you ask? Well, if you type agent, you get some settings, but not about that one. You can see that the agent is within the collaboration application. So if you type branding, you actually get into that one. And for the fun, if I just type collaboration, you will see I'll get all the other stuff besides branding when I type agent, which is kind of funny. I'll hit branding setup. And here you can change the picture that pops up up here, not, not these ones. But that one, you can change what it should say. And colors, a lot of colors, and even more colors. And some information about the agent itself. Now, if you like to change this picture, you will actually edit the bot user profile, which is actually a, a live profile. So you have a nice little picture with the name and so on. So that's basically where you can change that picture as well. You have some information up here as well, pointing at the docs so you can read about it. Then we're talking about the different things they're saying at the start. We go into general settings for that one. And here you can see you have the welcome message and the top selection message and so on. You can always also show, or not show, set how long it should take before the bot talks, which makes it a little bit more natural. And this is pretty much what you can do as general settings. Uh, the bad thing about this one in my eyes is that you can only have one setting in total. So if you're having, using the virtual agent for like CSM, IT, HR and so on, they are actually all looking the same and having the same welcome message and so on. Now, I haven't seen a way to say, welcome to the HR support, how can I help you? And then have the same agent say, welcome to the IT support, how can I help you, for example. 
but it's the first release there will probably be more fun stuff coming our way now let's do the even more fun stuff let's look at the topics in part one i showed you how to activate the topics in this case i have activated the, the CSM topics. I also created my first topic in my uh, first edition of this video. It's just still here. I can click on it just to, to give me a reminder of what I did. Yeah, exactly. Let's create it from the start though. Add a new topic. We're going to put the name. So my topic name, and I will just put it there so you can see where it actually will show up. A fun topic for everyone. Then you will have keywords. Keywords are the things that the user should actually type in to trigger this topic. So I'll type in Goran just for fun of it. You can set conditions for who should this topic actually be available for through conditions, roles, and you could actually define which live agent it should be visible for. You can have the different queues or you can take the whole application. I'll do that. Of course, if it should be visible, you need to activate it. So let's activate it or I probably need to save it first, I guess. Now I have saved it. I got a few more buttons. I can hit the activate. If I go to the portal now and let's start over let's see if i can create a i don't really know when i can create a new conversation or not that's kind of strange but let's type in help me and you can see it didn't really find anything but if i type goran now both my old one and my new one will hit because I have the same keywords on that one. But if you type in something that will find a match, it will show you those ones. And when the user clicks on that one, it will go into that topic flow. And now I don't have anything in that topic. So we're going back to the start again. So let's go and build our first topic flow. I'm just going to do a, a quite an easy one just to show you how it can be done. And then I will actually go through a out of the box one that are way more complex that my poor imagination can actually build. So we have user inputs where the user can do different stuff. We have bot responses where the bot give back different stuff. And then and then we can do some util stuff to fetch information and do decisions which way to take and so on. In our case, let's put in a text, meaning that the user needs to put in something and we call it a user. What is your name? Or we just call it username. That's easier. Hmm, I'm just thinking if username is a good name on a variable. I don't think so. Let's call it the uh, US name. And we have a question. What are we going to ask the user? So, hi, what is your name? All of these different messages, you can either just type it in here or you can actually do some coding to get the message. In here, you have some examples on what you can do. If you have some kind of uh, multi-language and so on, you might want to start using the get message just to get the right language and so on. The acknowledge message is actually the message that we will tell the user after they have inputted something. You have these informations that are actually quite good as well to, to see what is actually you and I'll just write thank you so we'll save that one and when you're building your topic you can actually do a preview and run the topic in a, a test chat what to 
understand is you don't get the start of the chat because this one is actually happening after you have chosen the topic at the start. So, hi, what's your name? Goran. And then we'll have the acknowledge message. Thank you. And then it's ending. Now, before we go into the out of the box one, I'm just going to show you how you can actually easily reuse the information that the user has given us. So I'll use a bot response. And then, of course, I'm going to take whatever the user put in here. So we call this welcome user. And the response message, then we actually need to go into scripting. And we're actually just going to steal one of these and put it here. And I'm going to explain to you what you do. I'll just say hi there and then I'll put in a parameter. And this is actually how we handle the user inputs. All the data that the user puts in is in the VA inputs object. Meaning I can type like this and I get all the variables I get to choose from. So. I'll just say we'll use that one and put in the brackets. I deleted too much like that. So hopefully it will say hey there and then whatever I types. So let's save it. I always save. Guess that is something from doing a lot of reports and forgetting to save those reports and being forced to start over all again. So I am Mr. Anderson from the Matrix. Thank you and hi there Mr. Anderson. In this case you can see how easy it is to just reuse what the user actually inputted to us. Now for the next step let's go back and let's take a look at the check case status. That is one of the out of the box ones and it's quite big. As you can see, ServiceNow has built their conversation in a special application. So let's go in there and change it to that one. And just reload. So it understands that I have changed the application. I'll hit the edit one and you can see that there's quite a lot of stuff to do. So let's start from the start and I'll going to zoom in, not that much. It's a little bit too bad that I can't really do some good zooming out. Let's just see, is this big enough? Yeah, I think so. So here we start. The sad part is that I can't like pull out the properties a little to the right and push in the user inputs and so on to the left and just have this nice little canvas where I build stuff. So we start, not so much. We have a, a locate method with it's this one, the static choice. Good thing is you can easily match them through the different uh, icons. And we'll see, we have the user inputs its variable name will be locate method. Some uh, questions and then if you scroll down you can see there is quite a few choices. So search by case number, search by short description and so on. Depending on what the user shows, the value will be this in this method. So hit preview. First thing it will pop is here is the locate method. Now, depending on what I did, we have made a decision. Need to decide where should we go. Let's take a look at the left first. See if I can scroll down to that one. Kind of annoying. It's down here. I'm done. Let's click on that one. You can see the text and the conditions to go down this road is the user input of this variable, if that value is four, then this one will return true and will go down that path. And that's probably the most boring path, so let's skip that one and go up again. 
click on the next one, you can see that they're basically the same. If the user choice is zero, then we we'll go into the case number, which you can see is a text field. We we'll click on that one. Variable name is case number. Please enter the case number. That's the only thing. Then we will do a script action. We can see it down here. And basically you can see that we are taking the value that the user put in as a number and contains, meaning it will search if you just type in 87, for example, it will try to find any number that contains 87. It needs to be active, order by number, then put in those records that we find, or even put in the SysID in a list variable, stringify that array and put that into the case list. Short description, uh, seems to be pretty much the same. What are the keywords to search for? And then we have a script action that does pretty much the same. Takes the keywords, short description contains and those words, and the same story all over again. Let's take a look at the other one. My active cases is pretty much going in, fetching all the active cases. Uh, good to know is that when I did the other video, I was worrying about the Glide record and not using Glide Secure to just fetch the record that the user actually is running. But this one is actually running this server side scripting in the user context. So it will actually just see the records that they are allowed to see through ACLs, which is quite nice. So it will fetch the active records and this one will pretty much fetch all that I am either contact or consumer and the state is 18 awaiting user info. So we get, no matter which choices, we get all the cases in an array with SysIDs. Then we need to make a decision. Did we find any matches or not of the cases? No match. It goes down this path if the variable length is zero. Then you will throw in a bot response with some text that we couldn't find in the cases. Please try again and we'll go up and start all over again. If you find any matches, if the length is one or more, And one thing to notice here as well is that we're actually setting another variable and using VA variables, it's actually a way to use variables not from the input of the user, but in this topic. So we're setting that variable index to zero. Then we're going to pick from a case. And this is kind of interesting because I noticed a bug here. <laughs> in my eyes at least, when I tested it in the first edition. Let's go through here first. Of course, some prompting, pick the case you want to check. Acknowledge message, just like I showed you in my own topic. And then you can decide how should the choices be? Should it be through script or record? And let me just click here first. You can see that you got all these cool scripts. What I did was I just clicked on record to show you, hey, take a look, see how fun this is. And then I went back to script. And then you can see my code is gone, which in my eyes is a bug. I would have been pretty mad if this has happened to me when I have done all that code and just accidentally perhaps clicked up here and went back. So, one issue, this is nice. Wonder what that is. Table is mandatory, it's complaining about that one. Now, the only way to get that back is don't press save. I wonder if I just can reload the page. Let's try that one. Uh, 
and we're back to scrolling let's scroll out a bit let's give it a pick from case and let's see and the code is back so basically you can see that we put index to zero in this case because that is the value we set in the in the decision we'll fetch the the first six choices from the case list we'll get the cases put them in a list get some short description and number if there are more than six we'll have a next button of course and if index isn't zero we have a previous button and we have a cancel button so we can cancel it then let the user pick something and let's just see how it looks like we'll go in here we'll pick by uh, let's pick by number and for the fun of it can have zero zero i guess that would give us the most cases and here you can see we have some cases and we have the next if i click next it will actually go to the rest and i can actually get back previous and let's select something i would like to select that one let me just move out that one for a bit so basically i came to the decision i first clicked next which in this case is pretty much did i click next well let's uh, add the index to six more did i pick previous let's count down the index with six so the next time we get up here the index number is different and we'll fetch different cases and if we go the other way around is the cancel one which will go all the way to the top i won't scroll up to the top because as you notice it's not so easy to scroll in this zoomed in vision so we went to continue we're pretty much checking did we actually get a valid sysid from a valid case if so put that sysid in here and return true we'll go down to another script action where we actually are going to to fetch uh, fetch the, the table Then we'll have a nice information. Here is the case you selected. Just uh, import from the, the bot. Then we'll have a nice script output. Which pretty much means I haven't looked that much into it. But basically you can see that it's using some cool scripting clue that you can probably steal as well if you would like to build stuff like this and it's building some HTML part with just putting in some information and my guess is that in here you can see which field it should take and so on and let me show you what happened so we picked the case we got the, the bot acknowledge message and then the formatted case layout is this this is what it built for us even a clickable link as well the next thing is the additional choice which is a static choice just like the first one where it decides you can do some stuff you can add a comment attach a picture check another case go directly to agent instead or say i'm done with this um i want to go home now so we have a decision like the upstairs and as you can see we have the different choices here as well with and somehow they skipped four i'm not really sure why but uh, they decided to do that i always get curious when they do that they probably had another choice that didn't work and they just removed that one i guess so here you can see depending on what you have chosen if you're done we get a, a bot response thank you for your time bye bye 
we can attach an image to the case, which is pretty much an attachment. And we'll take a look at that one, which is the image picker user input. And I'll just go here and I'll click add a, attach a picture. Let's see what's happened. Select a picture and I'll click on a upload an image. I'll just take a blue pin. I can see my nice looking image and I'd updated the case with your picture. And let's see here what did happen. This one which my guess is pretty much the out of the box one for handling the, the pictures and looking, getting the media table and so on. Then we go to attach the image. So what we basically are here, we go into the sys attachment and we write down the image file into and connect that to that case. And then we have the picture knowledge and then we go back to our decision if we would like to do something else. Just like we, were, we attached it and then we went back a second row and see if we like to do stuff. We have the com comment addition. Enter your comment. It's a text field. The user enters something. We'll go in and do some scripting and pretty much goes in put in some comments in the case and update it. And then of course, if the state was 18, which it probably was, we'll change the, the state for that one. And since this is the custom service management, this is one of those state flow stuff you need to do to handle the states. And the last one is connect to an agent. And we actually are using this out of the box functionality to re-route to a real queue to a real agent and not this uh, bot. Then when the chat is done, we get an acknowledge saying, thank you for using the support and get my username bye bye. So let's test it from the start. Let's reverse rate Kais. Kais? <laughs> That's kind of a, a swingish case. Check case status. Thank you. I'll put this in the middle instead. Oh, I can't move that. That's kind of annoying. So search by case number. And I'll hit the, whoops, zero, zero. And we have all the fun. Next, go next. So I would like to have that one. Alienware, that's good stuff. Well, not so good if the part is not working, but we'd like to add a comment. Get my gaming computer running. And you can see it updated the state uh, with my last comment. And now, uh, well, I'm pretty done. I have expressed my feelings. Thank you for your time and then it will give me the acknowledge message. Uh, one thing that's kind of annoying is that it starts all over again. Uh, I haven't found any settings where you could remove that, but I guess that's just how it is. So this was the second edition of the, the virtual agent one true. I hope the sound sync will work this time and I don't look that tired like I did in the first edition. So thank you for your time and see you later.